Hello, hello. It's been a while. I have to admit, I haven't done any makeup of any sort since the last Ogi video, which was out of focus for most of the time and blurry because the internet was going in and out that day. So hopefully I'll refilm that video at some point. I'm kind of sad I wasn't able to do all the Hokkaido series videos before the price increase, but I do plan to finish that series eventually someday. If I keep looking off to that side, it's because my monitor is over there and the camera is over here, so I'm kind of checking to make sure I'm still in frame. These brushes I've been sitting on for a while. These, the Hinoki set I've used, the Kayaki mini set I have not used at all since they came out. I ordered them um, first day they came out and they've just been sitting untouched because I have not done makeup since May since for graduation and I'm really excited to play with them and I have to admit Sonia G is probably my favorite brand at this point for various reasons but I still do love all my other brushes. It's just that when I select brushes for my rotation, it seems like a majority of them are Sonia G. So you make the call. Okay, let's see. I think I'll start out by using the Clarisonic to kind of get rid, rid of some puffiness and then go into actual makeup makeup. I don't know if you can hear this, and if me talking over it is creating some sort of weird sound combination. But basically, it's been busy. Um, I finished up the doctorate, and that was a hard push towards the end. So that took a lot of time. And then coordinated two moves in the same month. Personal move for me and for the place I work. So... That was extra fun. I think I took two months to recover from that. And I finally got what I think it's a nice setup going on. I'm happy with my schedule. There's consistency. So hopefully it's back to filming. I can't promise a consistent schedule of filming. I never can. But I'm happy to be back. Like setting up for filming the video, uh, the video and audio things, I was super excited and couldn't wait to get started. But then I had to do all the checks to make sure that everything looked okay, sounded okay. I don't usually run it for the full three minutes. I just run it for as long as I think I need it to. And then at nighttime, I like to take this up into the scalp because I do feel like that helps a lot with the limbs drainage. But for now, I'll just do an express version of it. One of the reasons why I've kind of not been using makeup as much is because I upped my uh, topical retinol and <laughs> I've been shedding and flaking like a moth for a lot of the time. So probably every three days, my whole face skin just sloughs off. So that's been re making it really difficult to apply makeup. As of the last few weeks, it's stabilized a little bit. So hopefully it stays that way. I'm back to the little brush instead of the spatula for applying foundation out of this little palette because the spatula just doesn't work as well for spreading. And I'm glad I didn't throw the little brush away. I almost did. That would have been a huge mistake, but luckily I saved it because of sentimentality. And I'm looking that way because my mirror is that way, my camera is here, and my monitor is there. So hopefully this doesn't get too weird because most YouTubers look directly into the camera. I think this actually works better for makeup filming because then you can see the different angles and how light plays. And this way I don't have to turn my head to the side to apply things and show you the tips of brushes. So this might work out better. It'll be a work in progress for sure. All right, let's do the center of the face first because I haven't really applied makeup beyond just doing uh, spot concealing here and there. Like if I have like a really big blemish, like here's one that's going down, I would try to cover it up a little bit. But I haven't done a full face of makeup with highlighter, although it works. I don't even think I even know how to apply lipstick anymore. So <laughs> that's probably going to be the majority of the video towards the end. So I'm just using a very light layer right now to even things out. Probably going to go with a little bit more up here. 
and I might be too far away from the microphone. I'll have to check afterwards. What really irks me is the video, like the way the video shows up and the way the audio sounds in the inherent camera app on the laptop and through YouTube are different. So this is completely new. When I call this setup a work in progress, that's a lie. I have not worked on this at all. I just threw it together in the last hour and kind of hope it would work. So we'll see. Oh yeah, and I've been getting sick in an ordinate amount this year. Although there's a little bit of scratchiness left in my voice. And that's for, It's not COVID. I haven't caught COVID yet. But I've been getting really bad colds. Normally, I get a cold every couple of years. And I've gotten two this year. One right after graduation when I was on celebration vacation. So that really sucked. Okay. Covering that up. And then I'm going to go in with a slightly darker concealer. This is normally used for contouring, but I'm going to use it for covering up the blemishes because putting a light concealer over a blemish will make it look ashy. Meanwhile, putting a dark concealer over a blemish will make it actually disappear. If you hear slams and scratches and stuff, I'm opening a drawer down here to pull out makeup, pull out stuff, and also sliding things around below the camera to extract makeup and things. Here. So this is a complete test to see if this sort of setup is workable. If it's not, I'll plan my videos better and actually pull stuff out and have it ready so I minimize the weird noises. But my battle cry recently has been, if I took the time to do X, I'd never get around to doing Y. So that was kind of my approach to doing this video. If I took the time to kind of lay everything out the way I used to, this video would never get done. It would just take too long. I'd be exhausted at the end and have no energy left to make the video. So here we are. And I'm using a beauty blender rather than a foundation brush because of the flakiness and dryness from the retinol use for those of you who have just joined. Okay. In exchange for all that retinol use, I've had to use a lot less foundation because my skin has been a lot more even. Okay. So with the K mini Kayaki set, one of the brushes that came with it was a jumbo base, which I'm really happy about because my jumbo base from the Fusion series got uh, kidnapped by my sister for her own collection. And um, because I already put foundation on with um, the Beauty Blender, I'm planning to use this for liquid or cream blush. And I'll go through all the other brushes as I go along. Jeez, <laughs> I've completely forgotten how to film. All right, I'm wearing kind of a muted blue dress today. So instead of going with the bright red cream cheek, I'm going to go with number 16 of the Can Make Cream Cheek. And I think I can use this brush to grab a little and then apply it and then blend it out. The thing I like about the Can Make one is you have a lot of working and play time with it. I've hit pan on the red one and not quite on this one yet. I haven't used this one as much, but I do really like the color. I just haven't been using makeup. All right. So this brush, um, it's a little wonky looking because it's been stored, but it's usually symmetrical. Uh, it's really, really nicely shaped for getting into all the crevices. You can have a broad area to spread foundation. It's not the biggest foundation brush, but I think its versatility in terms of its size and shape and density makes it a really good all-rounder brush to bring on travel. And I'm really happy to have this in a travel compact size. And as you can see, it blended that out beautifully. And if I had cream bronzer, which I do not see anywhere right now, I would use it for that. Another thing that the jumbo base is good for is if you use some sort of primer or some sort of illuminator like the Burberry Fresh Glow, 
uh, before my sister took the other one, I'd use that one to kind of massage the product in to kind of put like a dewy base layer on and then go over with my foundation. It didn't make sense to me that that product you apply with your hands because it can get a little patchy when you apply with your hands. So if it's going to be a makeup based product, why not apply it with a makeup brush rather than applying it with hands? So just a little thing that I wanted to throw in there. Now let's see, for highlighter, I think I'll continue with liquid since it is a little, or cream, because it is a little dry on top of the cheeks. I'm using um, a depotted Marc Jacobs stick highlighter. And I'm gonna pat this in. I'm probably not gonna get through all the brushes I showed here, because the big Hinoki one I've been using for setting powder sunscreen or yeah, setting my liquid sunscreen of powder sunscreen. So I don't know if I need powder today. I might get around to it. And then now I'm going to use just the tip of this to blend it out. And this brush is a mix of synthetic and natural, which Sonia was working on for a really long time. And I have to say the Fusion series are absolute perfection for base products and liquid products and cream products. All right, that's done. I think I will need powder. It's getting a little shiny in here and a little hot. I have the AC running, but it's set a little higher. <clears throat> All right, what do I want to do next? What do I usually do next? Hmm. I think I will top it with a little bit of powder blush since it's a little low contrast right now. I'm a little tanner than I usually am. So we're going to go in with, let's see. I wanna save this brush for contour. So I think I will use the uh, Hanoki angled brush for applying blush. So before I do that, I'm going to take down the stickiness a bit with some powder. I'm going to be using a big Hinoki brush. So if you can see, the ferrule on this one is a little unique. It's almost like the Ogi brushes. And then this one is almost like the cable brush from Hakuhodo. It just has a little bit of a curve and that does affect the density and the way the bristles play and powder. I'm using that Hourglass Ambient Powder. This is an ethereal for me. This is the mattest of the powders and it actually does act as a mattifying powder for me. And even though this brush is pretty dense or pretty plush looking, it's not super dense, which is nice but it does have enough body to it to buff and blend really, really well. Oh, thank you, two moves in the same month was a little rough, but we got it done. And yeah, that's my scarf collection. I haven't put all of them out yet. I just took out my favorites and the ones that are seasonal. So I'll eventually arrange them because I used to kind of just have them like all shoved together uh, by color, but I actually want to sort them by theme and how I wear them. So that's another project. So this was, I actually don't know what the name of this one is. It's just the Hinoki. I just call it the Hinoki Big Brush. And again, great for bronzer, great for setting powder because of that size, but then you can turn it on its side and use it for blush. Actually, let's just do that right now. Why not? Layer more blush on since. Wait, I was going to use another brush for blush. Okay, we're going to use this one for blush. This one is actually a really good multitasker. You can use it for dusting on powder, just for the under eye concealer, for cheek products, this way, this way, this way. And then because of that shape, it fits in really nicely into crevices. And it is a bit of a softer, more flexible brush. So you are going to get more subtlety with it when you apply product. So I'm going to use this 
power fly flush noise exposure because I think it'll layer this plum will layer nicely over this sort of brown almondy pink color and tap it off because I don't know how these products work anymore it's been a while all right that looks good And that looks good. I think I'll go in with a little bit of highlighter on top of it. I'm going to use the Paul and Joe highlighter and this duo on this side. This is OO face color. And I'm using just sort of this edge of the tip. Is it a bit excessive to layer cream? Highlighter and powder highlighter. Yes, but I'm playing around right now. So we're doing it and I'm just using the tip right here to kind of just move it around and then putting the main part of the brush down to blend it All right, let me brush this down. I'm going to be using this one for contour or sculpting and shading as I prefer to do. Um, I think I've explained before that my definition between the two is contouring is I'm trying to reshape versus sculpting is kind of just working with what's already there. Maybe it should be the other way around go in here and then this is a round brush which I normally would not use for contour but because I like the Chukuhodo T6 so much for contour and that's a flame sort of round shaped ish brush I kind of wonder will the round shape give like a softer shadow so we're gonna test that out and if it doesn't work it's just makeup I can wipe it off and redo it touching it very lightly and using an actually small circular motions to push and blend it up Going to a little bit more. This is actually going on a little heavier than I expected it to because I thought, oh, this is a medium density brush. It won't apply that strongly. So this is actually stronger than I'd like. So I'm going to take another brush to kind of erase it a little bit and tone it down after I kind of finish applying it to the rest of my face because it might meld in a couple minutes that it takes and might look better, we'll see. Taking some more, going down here. I've lost all my brush vocabulary. I don't know how to describe stuff anymore. So hopefully the videos are clear enough to show what's going on. Feels like it's been forever. It's only been since May, <laughs> but it's felt like a really long time. Like I know I took a long hiatus a couple years ago for like a couple years, but this one felt like the same amount of time. The last four month span. Okay, still looking a little bit strong. I'm going to take this brush and go clean it up. So this is something I really like doing with my powder brushes, especially ones that are a little bit denser or medium density like this one. I like to use them as erasers to do blending or erasing if I over apply a product. And then push that up away and then erase it. Okay, that looks better. And this was this brush. This one, you could use it for under eye powder. I do feel like it's a little bit dense for that purpose. Definitely can use it for targeted blush, especially if you're doing the multi-layer of like a lighter color up here, darker color down here. This brush is really good for that. 
are a really good size for that. I haven't actually done that with this brush yet because this is the first time I'm using these brushes. All right, this is the Jumbo Worker, just like the permanent version from the Fusion series. Um, synthetic and natural bristle mix. And this one is usually used for concealer in larger areas. So if I was going to conceal discoloration around the mouth, around the nose, around the eyes, um, the forehead discoloration is mostly gone, so I didn't need to use this for a concealer brush. However, what I am going to use this for is for eye base. Oh, and because of the way this is shaped, if you want to get like a really sharp contour through your cheeks, through your nose, and through your eyelids, this would be the brush to do it. Actually, let's do that. Why not? Maybe not a super strong one, but kind of carve this place out a little bit. So contour it out. So you can see it fits nicely there. So we're going to drag it down. bring it through the socket and then this will provide the uh, base for my eyeshadow as well. Gonna, going through your temple I'm going to turn it this way to get a little bit of a flatter spread. Bring it through, wrap it around just a little bit and then back to blending down. And then repeat on the other side. Kind of deposit the product there. And something that I like to do for contouring is just put my finger down there and then it provides a nice guideline. And if there's the harsh, harsh edge on the Leftovers, I just take a brush and I go like that. We need a little bit more product on this side to balance it out. Okay. Now, eye brushes. The Kayaki set doesn't have a true paddle eye brush. It has two round brushes instead. So it has this little blending brush, the crease brush. This is made of Daisai Koho, I'm pretty sure. And then it has this detail brush, and I honestly have no idea if it's mis mixed with synthetic. I think it's mixed dyed and undyed Sai Koho goat hair. So, uh, just like everything else, I have no idea what I'm doing anymore, so I'm going to revert to my most basic eyeshadow application pattern. Um, let's see, I need a flat brush for this. I'm going to use the 9M from a Russian brand that Brush Chronicles got for me. And this one's just a flat paddle brush of gray squirrel, and I'm going to, what am I going to apply? No, let's do the crease color first. I like. So we're going to do a crease color first with the crease brush, and then we'll use the flat brush with a shiny brown. Let's see, what do I want to use? We'll use this MAC palette, go into this brown. I have Absolutely no idea what that color it is anymore. It's just a mid-tone, slightly warm, but mostly neutral leaning brown. Actually, it might only be warm because of the lights. It could be neutral, it could be olive, but it's not cool. I know that for sure. I'm just touch. I what I did was I rolled it in a pan. Um, for those of you who don't know, I feel like when you swipe at a product, you only get it on one side of the brush. So when I pick up product, I like to roll it in the pan of eyeshadows, and then it gets distributed all throughout. And then I feel like that gives a better application once you touch it to the skin. 
And also the product gets pushed into the brushes so you have a larger reservoir and you don't have to keep re-dipping. So right now I'm just using the tip to apply and blend as I'm going along, which is not hard with the way these brushes are designed. They're pretty much designed to blend as you place product. And I'm kind of pulling it out a little bit and I'm using the flat side to kind of diffuse it. And I'm rolling it slightly, so then it kind of acts like an eraser and blends it and erases the edges a little bit. Oh, my light just turned off. Did it run out of battery? It did run out of battery. Oh no, what am I gonna do? I mean, I guess this is okay. It's just a little harsh looking. Let me grab a battery pack and see if I can find a cable to charge that light. My light, my filming light is USB powered. So, if I can find where the plug is. That'd be great. Give that a few minutes. Oh well, in the meantime, continuing on. Let's see. I'm going to wrap around a little bit down here. That's one thing I should have made sure of before I started filming, whether or not it had enough battery to make it through the whole filming session. Okay, so I think I'm actually pretty satisfied with the way this brush blended everything and I don't need to go in with another bigger blending brush to blend the edges. But just because of demonstration purposes, I'm going to grab that big brush again, the Jumbo Worker, and just show that you can use, you don't have to be afraid of big brushes around the eyes. So normally you have small, medium, and large eyeshadow brushes when it comes to Japanese brands. And the large ones, you kind of look at them and you go, that's a small face brush. But the large ones, large eye, eye ones are actually really good for kind of blending edges and just detail work. It's probably not something you do normally every day, but for finishing touches and details, it's really nice. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go in with good old Sable from MAC. And then this is a gray squirrel brush in size 9. Mm. Do I want to use this one? Nah. I'm going to use this weird triangle one from Sephora instead. This is a pro drawing, <coughs> pro drawing shadow brush in 41. And it's made of synthetic and it has a unique triangle tip to it. It's discontinued, but I really like this brush. Anyways. It's almost like a pencil brush, but with three sides on it.
Alright, let's see if my light will be nice and decide to turn on for me. Nope. Oh, there we go. Yay! Okay. Nice. Gotta love USB-C. Fast charging. Okay. And I'm going to run a little bit of shadow down here. I'm going to use a slightly lighter brown for it. This is Lorelei, also from MAC. Going to use this mostly for illumination purposes. I'm not using the Sonia G brush for this purpose because the tip is not quite fine enough to run along the lower lash line. I'm going to use this brush after I wipe it off a little bit for a bit of highlighter later. I'm going to try using this brush for intensifying. I don't know how I feel about that since I haven't done strong eye makeup in a while, so this could be a disaster. Instead of using a black, I'm going to use a really uh, sort of smoky plum purple to do the intensifying. So I'm going to roll it in there. Just pressing to redistribute the product. And here goes nothing. I'm keeping this sort of below where my natural crease is. There's just only a little bit popping up. And of course, with these rounded sort of bullet shaped pencil brushes, the nice part is as you apply and as you go along, it blends for you. This one doesn't quite have the flexibility like the Chikohoto Z10 does to really allow you to graduate the pressure and create a um, liner wing or, or a wing liner shadow with it because it's not quite pointy enough and a tip is not quite soft enough. It's a little too rounded and a little too firm for that. So this is, in my mind, firmly a intensifier and also a smudging brush. Might end up using this for a smudger of eyeliner in a little bit. So that's the eyeshadow. Hmm. I'm going to tight line and then see how it turns out and then see if I want to do bottom liner. I think I have a poltergeist. Okay. I guess I didn't charge fast enough. I'm going to tight line with the Clinique quick liner. And this one kind of smudges a little bit. So throughout the day, it will transfer just a tiny bit to the lower lashes, and it actually looks really good. That's that. Do you want to turn on? Do you want to turn on? No? Okay. It's still... Oh, yay! Um, I think I might use a purple liner down here and use the small brush to smudge it out. 
So this one is entirely too flexible for it. This one has a nice firmness and you can see the eyeshadow just puffing out. So I will use this one to smudge after I find a suitable liner. Don't want brown, let's do purple. Where do my purple liners go? Mm, yeah, Rockstar, close enough to purple. This is one of the Urban Decay 24-7 liners. Oh, it needs to be sharpened. Next order of business, find another one. Okay, tornado. Oh, also needs to be sharpened. <laughs> this is great. How many pencils can I go through before I find one? Okay, that's too light of a color. Okay, good. This one is $19.99. How many pencils can Elena go through before she finds one that actually has a point to it? Take that brush. Where did I throw it? Okay, down here. Can you guide it up and meld it with the shadow? Clean it off a little bit. And now that I've done that, I think I do want to raise this outer third of my eye a little bit. So I'm going to be going back in with the crease brush and blowing out some shadow to raise and push back this part. So for that one, I'm going back to the crease brush and I'm going to be using that black shadow again. This time I'm going to be laying the brush down this way and using this almost like I would a paddle brush. That was actually way too much product on the pickup. So I'm going to remove some on the back of my hand and then and I'll take care of the blending with the jumbo brush later. Picking up excess. So I don't have to go back into the pan. It's sort of just drawing, shading, like I would with a pencil if I was just shading something in. Like with the side of the pencil, not the point. a little bit more and drag it into the temples a little bit. And then use this part, this brush to clean up this part a little bit and blend. So it does go into my eyebrow. Okay, I think that's it for eyes. I'll do a little bit of eyebrows and I don't know if I want to bother with lip product. My original plan was to do a red pink, but with the way the colors went, I think I will leave the lips a uh, pretty neutral color. So, eyebrows. Oh, mascara. <laughs> okay, eyebrows and then mascara. Some of you are probably wondering, why does she have so many brushes and no idea how to do makeup? But 
back fill a little bit. Okay. Mascara. Um, I have no idea where my lash separation comb for mascara went. But I do know where my lash curler is. That's a matter of which mascara do I want to use. So I want to be hardcore and use the waterproof mascara, or do I want to just use one that's easy to wash off and will probably smudge? Let's see. Do I plan on going outside today and sweating and getting hot? Mm. Possible. And something I forgot to do was warm up the curler. Normally I stick in the pocket of my jacket or my pants to warm it up and that does actually give a little bit better of a curl. I just grabbed this one cold, so I'll have to deal with not curled lashes later. I don't know if you heard that, my stomach just growled at me. More like gurgled, very petulantly. I love this mascara brush. I The formula could be better. This is the Clinique Chubby Lash, but I love the separation and the definition it gives. The brush. Maybe it's the mascara formula too. I can't tell you where my lash separation comb is, but I can tell you I have a bunch of other mascara brushes sitting around that I cut off other mascara things because I like what they do. So I'll probably cut this one off when I'm done with it. This mascara is close to the end of its lifespan. Okay. So I think all that's left is lips. I might have missed something, but I don't think so. And I think for lips, I'll just go back in with this cream cheek color. I'll just apply it using a lip brush. So I'm going to use... Mm. This is the Takeda Brush 4F Pure Red Sable. I interestingly got this off Amazon. I think it's no longer on Amazon, but it was for a while. And I bought a bunch of other Takeda brushes with it. Uh, not custom ones, mind you. These are from his standard line. And I don't know, they were available for a short time. So I grabbed as many as I could because it was so easy, so convenient. I didn't have to talk to anybody. And... I haven't played with most of them, to be honest. First time using this brush as well. But it's a square, flat brush. It's pretty intuitive. I just don't know in terms of how much product it'll grab and deposit. Um, it is Sable, not Kalinsky, so it gives a little less glossy of a finish with glossy lipsticks our cream lipsticks. I still remember there was a comparison post that Toshia at Food Day Japan did of the difference between using a flat brush made of sable versus Kolinsky to apply the same list lipstick and it almost didn't look like the same lipstick. It was kind of mind-blowing. I'm using the patented X technique for shaping the cupid's bow. You put it down here and drag it down. And then use the edge to outline the rest. Because this is a cream cheek, it will kind of slide off when I use a napkin or when I eat food, but I'm not super married to having the color on the whole day. I can easily reapply. I 
All right, so that's makeup look. I'm kind of pleased with how it turned out. It probably could have been cut down to half the time if I kind of had a plan, knew what I was doing, didn't have little technical issues to fiddle with. So thank you for those of the for those of you who've stuck around this whole time and hung out with me. Uh, I think what I usually do is I run through all the brushes again and I talked about how I used them and how you could use them. This is the Hanoki Big Brush. This is Pure Psycho. You can use it for setting powder, for bronzer, for buffing and blending. A mm, little bit dense for finishing. Uh, good eraser brush, so if you over apply product, take it and then erase stuff with it. So that's this brush. This is the Hanoki Small Detail Cheek Brush. It doesn't actually have a name printed on it, but this one nice and flexible good for under eye powdering good for sheer application of blush uh highlighter i don't know if i quite use it for contour it doesn't have the control that i would like but in a pinch it could definitely work for contour and of course target powdering around the face uh, it could work for it down here along the jawline there i'm less picky about uh, Jumbo Base Brush, one of the best brushes from the original um, release of the Fusion Brushes. So good. My sister stole it, so I'm glad to have another one because the set was out of stock for the longest time, as well as the single brushes. So great one to have for applying any sort of cream or liquid product. Uh, medium size, not very large, so it's not going to be the fastest brush. But it is bigger than most other foundation brushes out there that are round in the same shape because this one has a flatness, so you get more surface area, which is great. You can use it for cream brush, blush, cream bronzer, a little too big for cream highlighter. Sculpting, I suppose you could do if you're doing like areas like the reverse contour where you put dark and light and then use that to create the illusion. And let's see. This is the Jumbo Worker. The Jumbo Worker I usually used to use for before it was <laughs> stolen permanently uh, for concealer area, area, area. And then today I used it for chiseling out the nose and sculpting out the eye area and also for blending the edges of the eyeshadow to kind of work out the edge a bit. And then this is the crease brush, which I use for, well, the crease. And you could use this for very small highlighter if you wanted to. And then this is the detail brush. I wouldn't quite call it a pencil brush. It's intensifier and smudging for me. And you could use this for concealer. I think it is pure natural. So. I use pure natural brushes for concealer all the time, so I or spot concealing all the time, so I see no issue with doing that with this brush if you clean your brushes well. Another brush I used was the Sephora 41 Drawing Precision just because I needed a lid brush. And then the, where did I put Takeda? And then the Takeda. 4F Pure Sable Red Brush for lips. And to answer your question, yes. Kolinsky was better in my opinion. It gave the most true to color application of the lipstick. Like the way the lipstick looked in the tube with all the various little nuances and tones, the Kolinsky applied that better than the Sable did. It probably has something to do with the cuticle structure or density, whatever. Uh, not super sure why. Kolinsky hair is better structurally, but it just gave the nicer finish and application. I think I knew at one point, but I've totally forgotten. So that's all the brushes I was using today. Sorry if it's a little weird if I'm staring in all different directions because I'm checking myself in the mirror. There's the camera, there's the monitor. I was mostly checking the monitor this whole time or looking in the mirror. So thank you for dealing with me and I hope by the next video air three down from now, it'll be much better. Hope you have a great day and enjoyed this. Bye. And